Hey folks, today I want to talk to you about how to use the coping saw effectively and all the cool things it can do. So the coping saw consists of a handle, a frame, and a blade. This blade can be taken out of the saw very easily. If you put a little pressure on the frame, the blade just pops right out. Then you put it back in, you can just put one side in, put some pressure, get it in the slot, and let it go. And then we have a usable coping saw. Now these blades are very thin, so you have to be very careful. All you need to do on this to operate it is go back and forth at a rapid pace. You can turn and make any sort of shape you want, but you have to be moving back and forth to do it. If you just try to turn, you're probably going to break the blade. These are very thin little blades. They're meant for fine cuts. You can use a coping saw for straight across cuts. But the magic in a coping saw is making curves. So you can start and then curve that blade. And we can create any sort of curved shape we want. But you have to be moving back and forth in order to do that. You can't just turn and then cut. You have to be moving back and forth in order to cut with the coping saw. And one hand is all you need, just back and forth, back and forth. You don't want to do this, because that puts too much stress on the blade. You don't want to do this, because that puts too much stress on that blade. Just back and forth, that's all you have to worry about, is the coping saw. Now you can pick up a coping saw about anywhere. They're relatively inexpensive. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to get a coping saw of yours. And in future videos that we talk about putting trim in a house, coping saw comes in super handy. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. Thanks for your attention. Remember to work hard in what you do because hard work is its own reward. Thanks for watching.